In this tutorial, we're going to look at how to use graphs to manipulate um, a series of uh, panels. So I'm going to start by drawing a simple rectangle and then fill it its corners so that we can get rounded edges. And this will be, let's imagine this as a floor slab or kind of the boundary of a building. Then I'm going to load this in using a curve plugin and set one curve and choose this curve. Now that it is loaded, um, we can actually now divide this curve into a bunch of points and draw panels on it. Uh, but for this exercise, I'm actually going to use frames. So the first uh, step is to actually do the single panel using a perpendicular frame. I'm going to link my curve into the curve component and then I'm going to pass in a floating value, let's say 0 0.5. Now, what I want to do is actually uh, have this as a percentage uh, re referring to the length of the curve. So I'm going to reparameterize the curve, which sets the domain of the curve between 0 and 1. So now if I use this plugin, you can see that the first point or the starting domain, um, the beginning of the curve is here. And then as I'm moving along, uh, it ends up uh, moving towards that side as well. So it's basically we are covering the full length of the curve uh, as, a, as a domain. So when we do reparameterize, we're actually normalizing it to an interval of 0 and 1. So I'm going to use this perpendicular frame to construct a panel there. And to do that, we're going to use the rectangle. And the way rectangle works is basically it requires a plane, construction plane and XY domains. So the domains are basically intervals. So I'm going to type in construct domain. And I need to feed in some numeric value here. So let's say my height is going to be four. So I need uh, a domain between zero and four. And if I feed this in to my X, you can say that see that my rectangle has unit um, four uh, height in this case. Now I'm going to make a copy of this and for the Y I'm going to set it between 0 and 0 0.5. So the, the upper boundary let's say um, so this one we can actually make it a floating one and I want that value to be set to 0 0.5 so this goes here and we can control the depth of this panel now so let's let's actually start with one. Now that my panel is set um, the way we're going to do this is actually first we're going to um, multiply the amount of panels and then we're going to look at how we can control a uh, rotation of these panels. Now to do the rotation um, we can actually look at this on a single panel first. Uh, we have a frame and we, wa we want to rotate let's say this panel uh, along this frame so I can simply convert this to um, a surface using boundary surfaces and we want to rotate this along this x-axis. So for, the, for to do this, we can actually use Rotate 3D. And this one takes in a geometry angle of rotation and a center of rotation and a rotation uh, axis. So we can actually get some of these information from the current frame that we have. So all I need to do is uh, deconstruct, um, deconstruct the plane that we have. And this will give us the rotation axis, which is going to be x-axis, and the center of rotation, which is going to be the origin of the plane. And I can pass in the, the surface, and I can pass in an angle. Now, for the angle, I want it to go all the way up to 90 uh, as maximum. And we need to convert this to radians. So if this is degrees, the rotation would always take in radians, so that we need to convert degrees to radians. Now I'm going to hide uh, this construction so that we can now test the rotation. So when it's zero, you can see that it's perpendicular to the to the facade. And when it's 90, it's rotating. It's actually doing more than 90 because it's set to 100. I'm going to manipulate it so you can see that this is the movement we're going to get. Now that it is done, uh, this is basically the first construction we need to make. Um, now I'm going to multiply the amount of uh, panels we have. So to do that, it's pretty simple. We, we're just going to use perpendicular frames. 
and I'm going to pass in my curve and pass in a numeric value. Let's say we want 50 perpendicular panels so that we get all of those panels. And I'm going to pass in these frames for the construction of the rectangle. And I can also uh, pass them in for the construction. And I'm going to disable the preview of the panels. Uh, and we don't need this one anymore, so we can delete that. And now let's see, uh, let's test if all the rotations are working um, like we want them. So when I rotate, you can see that the panels are closing. Now the the width of the panels, we can actually control them either by increasing the uh, amount of panels we have, or we can also change the length of the panels, right? So there could be overlap or they could be shorter. So I'm going to keep this at one and for the amount of panels, I'm going to keep it at let's say 75. Now, um, what I want to do is actually a bit more dynamic. So I don't want all these panels to have the same rotation. I actually want to control these using a single graph. And to do that, I'm going to use a graph mapper. And for the graph, I'm going to input a signed summation function. You can also use any type of function. And I'm going to pass in a range parameter for this. Now, the graph uh, mapper would work uh, within the domain. So right now, my x goes between 0 and 1. If you double click on the graph, you can actually see this a bit better. The, the left boundary of the x or the graph is set by 0, and the right bound is set to 1. And my height, the y, is set between 0 and 1 as well. So the way it works is when I pass in an x value, I get a corresponding y value that is evaluated from the graph itself. So for instance, if I pass in uh, 0 0.5, uh, in this case, when I pass this in, you can see that we're evaluating the graph at the um, in the middle, and that will output 0 0.65. And when I'm moving it along the graph, you can see that my evaluations could change. I'll actually make this a bit more rounder. So you can see that the numeric values and evaluations are changing. Now, the reason why I want to use range is because the evaluations are going to take place between 0 and 1, uh, but I need uh, 75 evaluations. So when I pass in the same uh, value to range, we actually get 76 values. So I want to actually subtract 1 from this value so that the output of the range would have 75 values as well and this the interval of these values will be between 0 and 1 so basically we are dividing 0 and 1 into 75 increments when I pass this in uh, these will be all of my evaluations now what I want to do is I want to use these as kind of a percentage so when it's 100% I want the full degree rotation when it's 0% I want uh, none of that rotation right so when I do um, multiplication I want to multiply these values with the angle of rotation I want to have. Let's say my full angle of rotation would be set to 90. So if, if a value is at 1, it will rotate 90 degrees, so the panel will close. If not, it will get an in-between value. And I'm going to convert these to radians, and voila. You can see that now the graph is controlling how each panel is rotating. Right. So now we, it's kind of like... A, a fluid field that we have. Let's say that, um, I mean, one thing we can add to this as kind of a more functionality would be, let's say we want to limit the uh, panels that uh, are going to rotate. So let's say we want to keep most of them as uh, flat and the rest is kind of uh, opening up. So the way to do that would be to actually restrict the values to hit 100% uh, or output 1 as much as possible. To do that, I'm going to double click on the graph and change the y interval to 2. You can also set this to any other value greater than 1. And you will see that this will output more values that are greater than 1, which will give us a higher degree of rotation when, when multiplied by 90. But let's say we want to limit them to 1. Uh, so if a value is greater than 1, we want it to be 1. So to limit those, we can use minimum. So I can pass these uh, graph values, and I can pass in 1. And what minimum does is it will compare two values, and it will output the minimum of either one. So if a value is greater than 1, it will be replaced with 1. 
and we, I'm going to make these a bit uh, lower as well so we can make it like that now when when I pass this in you can see that some areas that are above uh, one are closed and the other areas are opening up so if um, you move it around you can see that we get more closure now uh, where we want and the other areas are uh, opening up the way we like them to be and you can also control this um, however you like um, thanks for watching the video um, this was actually the whole of it so we first um, uh, created a curve based panel which is a perpendicular uh, panel like a louver and then we multiplied that by using perpendicular frames and then I used a graph mapper to control how much each panel is going to rotate and we use uh, we use the minimum to actually filter some of the data so you can see that when I'm moving uh, the graph around the results are responding simultaneously you can also use other types of graphs so if you right click here go to graph types you can also use a linear graph um, or like a uh, we can also use a conic graph or a Bezier. Bezier is basically two points and two vectors. So if, if you have values above uh, one in this case, because we are filtering them out, you can also um, get like different types of expressions. So this has a lot of, uh, a lot of basic functionality that you can use. So again, thanks for watching. Um, if you, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. If you leave any comments uh, about what you would like to see next, you can comment below. Um, thanks again, have a nice day.